Okay, let's go ahead and go over this. Like I said before, you're going to be solving each of these and identifying which one did not belong. So when we worked each of these out, we had negative 4, 4, and negative 4, so the 4 did not belong. Let's go ahead and work these out for problem B. I'm just going to go down the row, and you're going to tell me what your answer is for each of these. So we're going to start here. Gavin, what's answer number one for problem B? 8. 8. Positive 8. Okay. Uh, Marshall for answer 2? Two, yeah, very good. And then Anasia for answer three. Two. So then which one does not belong, guys? A. Or, or the eight does not belong. It is not like the others, okay? Um, let's go on. So for, we're talking about row six problems, or sorry, C, row C. Uh, Jackie, what is the answer for answer one? Row C. Huh? Not negative, it should be positive 34. Should be a positive 34. Um, I'm going down the row, going down the rows. Camille, what's the uh, answer to? Positive 34, okay. And then Aisha, what is problem three? Negative 24. Negative 24, so which one doesn't belong, guys? Negative 24, okay. Negative 24 is not like the others. All right. Ashir, what is answer to D, answer one? Negative 71, good. And then, um, ooh, Ashley. Negative 71. And then Angel. Negative 64. So which one doesn't belong? Negative 64. So negative 64 does not belong. Okay. Mia, for E, answer one, what did you get? Negative 25. Negative 25, good. Okay, and then uh, Yelani, what did you get for? Negative 65, okay. And then Natalia? Negative 65, good. So the one that doesn't belong is the negative 25. Okay, Justin, for... Problem F, answer number one, what did you get? Zero. You got zero. Okay, what about for answer two, what did you get, Isabella? 26. Okay, and then for answer three, Diana? Zero. Okay, so the one that doesn't belong is the 26. All right. Problems G, answer number one. Josiah, what did you get? Negative 23, good. Okay, for problem two, what did you get, um, Guadalupe? Negative 21, good. And then for problem three, what did you wind up getting, um, Isaiah? Go ahead and do it right now. Do 62 plus negative 95 plus 10. Negative 23, good. So the one that doesn't belong, guys? Negative 21. Negative 21 doesn't belong. Okay, let's take a look at problems H, so problem one for H, Aon, negative 35. Okay, Christopher, for problem two, what did you get? Negative 35. Okay, and then for problem three, Judy, what did you get? Negative what? Negative 21. Okay, so the one that does not belong is the negative 21. Okay, so you're just going through and identifying things that are not like the other. Two of them were the same, one of them was not. Everybody good? Okay, let's go ahead and flip it on over to the back. So today, what we're going to be working on is our addition and subtraction with rational numbers. So rational numbers, remember we talked about that the other day. 
Rational numbers are numbers that can be in decimal form that either terminate, which means they stop, or they repeat, which means they have the same value over and over and over again. So we're going to focus on just decimals today for our addition and subtraction. Now, what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be focusing on something that's actually very, very common um, in day-to-day -day use, which is bank accounts writing checks and keeping up with your checkbook or with your checking account. Now, a lot of it is done digitally these days, um, but it's always good to have a document that you are comparing with your digital um, version of your, of your bank account. Because sometimes things can happen where maybe you wrote a check and the person you wrote the check to never deposited it. So you have it withdrawn from your account, but your bank hasn't withdrawn it yet. And it lets you know that you can tell the person, hey, I need you to go ahead and deposit that check into your account so I can see it balance on my side. Because what if they don't deposit it until you are low on money in your account? Then that's going to throw you off. Um, there are also times when somebody might break into your account. Maybe they steal your account information and they start doing transactions using your account information and you can know, hey, this is what I have on my paper. Here's what my bank is telling me. I need to go ahead and cancel this account or put a hold on this account because somebody has stolen my information. So it's always a good idea for you to keep your own separate um, notifications or own separate uh, information on it just to make comparisons. And you should always be checking it at least once a week, you should be checking to make sure that the transactions you've made align with what they have on their, their digital version of the accounts, okay? Um, so some key vocabulary words, transaction, when we talk about a transaction, we're talking about a debit or a credit from an account. Um, a debit from the account means that you're withdrawing the money, you're using the money, either you're writing a check or you're using your debit card um, to, to write out some, some money or to pay something. A credit means that you are depositing money into the account. So unfortunately, I kind of uh, missed a space to these. So let's go ahead and highlight this information in green so we know. A credit is when something good happens to your account. You're putting money into your account. We like that kind of thing. A debit means that it's being withdrawn from the account, so that means money's being taken out of your account to pay something off, okay? So we're going to talk about these different situations that we have going on at different dates where we're going to go ahead and balance our checkbook. So taking a look here at situation number one. We're going to use this ledger, that's what they call them when you have like a record of your bank account. You're going to use this ledger to answer some questions about information that's going on here. The first thing that we need to do though is balance the checkbook that we've got. So it says on August 12th, your beginning balance is at zero dollars. So starting here, I've already updated the date in there. I put 8-12, beginning balance. That's my transaction. I didn't have anything taken away or anything added in. My balance is at zero dollars. It says, on August 16th, you receive a check from your grandmother for $40 for your birthday. Is that going to get added in or taken away from your account? Added in. So we're going to go and highlight that in green. So this piece of information right here, we've received a check for $40 for our birthday we are going to go ahead and add that in. So we're going to write that in in green. We have to make sure we put the date. So it says August 16th. So where it says date, I'm going to put 816. For a transaction, I'm going to state what it is. I got a check. I got a birthday check. Or you could write things like check from grandma. Okay. Under payment, I don't have a payment, so I'm going to go ahead and slash through that. Under deposit, I'm going to put $40. And now I'm going to change my balance. Because of the fact that I'm adding that into my balance, my balance is now going to be $40. 
That is my new balance. Okay, my second transaction, it says on August 16th, so on the exact same day, you receive a check from your parents for $100 for your birthday. Okay, so that also is a deposit. It's a positive account. So I'm going to highlight that in green. So again, another transaction, 816. Again, I got more birthday money. There was no withdrawal that happened, but I did receive $100 this time, which means my balance is now how much? 140. Not 100, but 140. We're going to add that in. Okay. On August 17th, you purchase a pair of pants from Old Navy for $23.42. Is that going to be a deposit or a withdrawal? A withdrawal, which means we're going to highlight this information in pink. It's coming out of the account now. So again, I'm going to put my date. I'm going to put 817 for this date. I purchased pants from Old Navy. So all I have to do is just write down Old Navy. It's information that happened for Old Navy. Hello, go ahead and take a seat in the back row. Make sure you're working quietly on Miss Barbieri's stuff. <clears throat> okay, this time it is a withdrawal. So I'm going to put that amount here, $23.42. And now I'm going to go ahead and subtract it away from the 140 so in your calculators, you should be typing in 140 minus $23.42. Okay, so we type in 140 minus $23.42, and it's going to come out to $116.58. Is that positive or negative? Positive. So I'm going to go ahead and still keep it in green for my balance. So my new balance is $116.00 and 58 cents. Okay, those of you again who just came in from Miss Barbieri's class, you should be working on whatever it is that she's got for you guys. Okay, we've got one more transaction. On August 18th, you find $5.19 in change during the day. Okay, I find the money. So is that a withdrawal or a deposit? deposit. So it's going to be something we're going to balance it out, highlight it in our green. It's money that we're finding that's a positive thing. So we put 818. I'm going to put down that I find money. I found some money. So I don't have a withdrawal happening, but I am going to go ahead and deposit this money, this $5.19. So I'm going to add $5.19 to my $116.58. That means my bank account now is sitting at $121.77. Okay, our last transaction, August 19th, you purchase socks from Walmart for $12.76. It's a purchase. So is that a withdrawal or a deposit? Withdrawal. Withdrawal. Good. So highlight that in pink. That's our withdrawal. So we put 819. For our transaction, we just put down it was Walmart because when you look at it on your digital account, they're just going to state what the store was. They're not going to state your exact purchase. They're not going to tell you that you purchased socks. They're just going to tell you the store that you bought from. Okay. This is $12.76. We do not have a deposit going on here, so we're just going to subtract $12.76 away from our balance. We're still in the positive, so I'm still going to leave it in green. It's at 
and one cent. $109 and one cent is what we're ending at. So the question A, what is our balance after five transactions? So our balance after five transactions is $109 and one cent. For question B, how much money did you deposit? So all of the deposit. So that means in my deposit column, I want to add all this together to find out how much total I've deposited into the account. So go ahead and add all that together and figure out how much total you deposited into your account. How much, in, uh, in Asia? Very good. $145.19 is the total amount of money that was deposited into the account. My last question is asking how much money did you pay or withdrawal? So all the negative amount that was taken out. So now where we have our withdrawals, we're going to combine all that together to see how much money, which means it's going to be a negative value, isn't it? Okay, so when we combine negative $23.42, with negative $12.76, it comes out to a negative $36.18. That's how much we withdrew from the account. Oh. Whoever has the whistle, stop. Okay. What I want you guys to do is you're going to do the exact same thing again, but you're going to do situation number two on your own. So go to the next page. The next page, you're going to start with situation number two. Now note, I've already put down what your balance is starting at. On May 5th, you're starting with $8 in your account. You're going to go ahead and take note of each of these transactions. Don't forget to identify the date. Give the transaction a label. If it's a store, what was the store? Okay. Um, if you earned money but it wasn't from a store, then obviously you want to put just a side note of what it was. Okay. If it was a withdrawal, put your money here. If it was a deposit, put your money in the deposit column. And make sure you do not put it in both columns. It can't be a withdrawal and a deposit at the same time. And then balance your checkbook. Okay. You're just doing the ledger for situation number two and then answering questions A, B, C, and D. A, B, C, D is what you're answering. Okay, here's what we're going to do. <clears throat> we're going to go ahead and go over this one. So again, we are starting on the 5th of May. Our beginning balance is $8.00. On May 6th, you spent $4.38 on a gallon of ice cream at Marty's Ice Cream Parlor. So is that going to be a positive transaction or a negative transaction? Or negative. So where does that go? Withdrawal or deposit? Withdrawal. It goes under the withdrawal. So I'm going to go ahead and highlight that in my pink. May 6th. Okay, so we have 5, 6. For the transaction, what should I put here? When I'm identifying what the transaction is, what should I put here? Marty's ice cream. I shouldn't just put ice cream. I need to put Marty's. I need to put the name of the store that the transaction's happening at. Okay, because again, when you're looking at it digitally, that's what they're going to have. Marty's ice cream is going to be written as the transaction on your digital account. Okay, it was a withdrawal, so it's going to be that $4.38 that's happening here. Okay, and again, it is going to be something that's taken out of the account. So that means we're going to subtract $4.38 away from $8. What's our new balance going to be? I am $3.62, and it's positive. I'm going to go ahead and write that down in green. $3.62, it is positive. We did not have any deposit going on here. Okay. All right, our next transaction. On May 7th, you spent $3.37 on crackers, a candy bar, and a Coke from Circle H Convenience Store. Is that a positive or negative? Negative. negative. So that's going to be a withdrawal again. 
You bought all of these items from one store, though. The whole transaction was $3.37. Because, again, your ledger is not a receipt. It doesn't tell you every single detailed item that you bought. It just tells you the store you bought it from. So, 5-7, we shopped at Circle H. And we spent $3.37. Okay? So, that means there was no deposit happening. When we take $3.37 out of our account, what are we left with, Aisha? Zero dollars and twenty-five cents, but it's still positive, so I'm going to put that in green still. We're still in the positives, but this is a problem. We're getting really close to that zero mark or to a negative mark. That's not good. Okay. On May 8th, you received ten dollars for cutting the neighbor's grass. Is that positive or negative? Positive. Positive. Okay. So since they are paying you, you don't have a store that it's going to show up as. So you can just write down that it was lawn or cut grass or your neighbor paid you something as a payment that you got, okay? Now, there was no withdrawal that had happened, so I'm going to cross off withdrawal. The deposit was $10, and it's going to get added into our account. So what's our new balance? Good, $10.25. Very good. Okay, last transaction. On May 8th, you spent $14.80 on a downloaded book for your Kindle. Okay, positive or negative? Negative. Negative, because you made a purchase, right? So it's a negative that's going to happen in your payment. So on 5 8, we're going to put Kindle, right? Or Amazon, whatever it's going to show up as, it's Kindle purchase of $14.80, so there was no deposit. What's our new balance going to be? $4. Good, negative $4.55. You're now in the negative zone, which is not good. When your bank account goes into the negative in real life, your bank is going to charge you for that. If you drop below zero and you're having to borrow money from the bank, they typically charge you a penalty. Um, some banks might charge $10. Some banks might charge $20. So it depends on the bank itself. Okay? Now, let's answer these questions. What is your balance after the four transactions? So what was our balance? Good. Negative four dollars and fifty-five cents. That was our balance at the end of all of our transactions. How much money did you deposit? So what was our total deposit amount? Ten dollars. We only had one deposit amount of ten dollars. How much money did you pay or withdraw in total? Good. Negative twenty-two dollars and fifty-five cents. If we take all the negatives we have, that negative four dollars and thirty-eight cents, and we add it with the negative $3.37, and we add that with the negative $14.80, it's gonna come out to a total of negative $22.55. So now the question is asked, can you really afford to spend that, that $14.80 on the Kindle? No. Could we afford it? No. no, if we could afford it, we wouldn't have dropped into the negatives, so no. We cannot afford it, okay? No, we cannot afford it. So if not, how much money do you need to earn to have the account balance of zero? So how much more money do we need? $4.55. $4.55, think of it. Think of zero pairs, remember? Zero pairs. In order to create a balance of zero, you need to create a zero pair. So if currently, currently we've got a negative 4.55 in the account, that means we need to earn a positive $4.55 into the account. We need $4.55 in order to be able to create that zero amount. Okay, it balances each other off. That's how you create that zero pair. All right. So what you guys are responsible for 
is you've got situation three and then a set of questions is that last page. This is your assignment for today. You are balancing the checkbook and then answering those four questions. Balancing your checkbook and answering those four questions. That is your assignment. When you are finished with your assignment, you are going to go ahead and bring it up to me. When you are finished with your assignment, you're going to bring it up to me. And then I will check it. I won't keep it. I will turn it back to you. But I'll do a quick check of it.